RF man here. Today I'm going to be talking about multiband and fed antennas or what's sometimes called a long wire antenna and I'm not just going to discuss the antenna but I'm going to talk about the entire antenna system. So we're going to start out by talking about how to make an antenna. Okay, just using ordinary multi-strand 12 gauge wire. Uh, then we're going to talk about using a 9 to 1 un -un transformer. Okay, you can see I have a homemade version here. So I'll be explaining what it's used for, how it's made, etc. Then I'm going to talk about 1 to 1 RF chokes and why those are important. So I've got an RF choke here. I'm going to talk about how to construct that, how to test it, etc. And then we're going to talk about antenna tuners or couplers, or sometimes called antenna matchers. Okay, and I have a, a homemade version here. I have it mounted on a piece of shelving for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and when I finalize this, put it into a metal enclosure for, for safety, so it's properly shielded. So those are the uh, four topics that we'll be discussing in detail. And I'll be starting with the long wire antenna. All right, so multiband and fed long wire antennas. Uh, let me just start by explaining why I've decided to use this option in a neighborhood that I live in. We're not allowed to have any kind of towers or antennas on the roof. So I've got to go in stealth mode here and actually place all my antennas in my attic. Now, fortunately for me, I have a very high attic and it's actually up three levels because I have a terrace level on the house. So I get plenty of height and there's plenty of space in there to construct all kinds of antennas. So I already have a vertical dipole, two inverted Vs, and now I want to add this multiband and fed antenna. And this way I'll be able to set this up and use it with my ham radio across all bands. Now this is the option that's right for me. It may not be right for you. You can basically design an antenna that's at resonance for one frequency and use that just fine. Um, if you have a radio that has a built-in tuner, it should be able to tune if, if the length is at resonance or close to resonance. You can put several long wires up there for different bands, but I wanted to try to keep this somewhat simple and uh, that's how I started. But uh, as I learned here, um, I had to consider other options. So let's just talk about some of the general requirements for a multiband antenna. Um, yeah, it's important to use lengths that are not resonant across the amateur band. So from 160 to 10 meters. Um, and you can do the calculations yourself, but there's a lot of tables on the internet that show you all the various non-resonant lengths. So I'm going to share those with you. Okay. Also, the impedance of most long wire antennas is going to be somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000, depending on the length of the wire and, of course, the frequencies that you're transmitting it on as you're changing the frequencies, you're changing the impedance. Um, but this is, this is a good range for most antennas. could be slightly lower, could be higher. Okay. And you need to use a good counterpoise. Uh, if you're using an un un, and I'll explain what that is. Um, what I did, since my antenna is in the attic, you, your counterpoise has to be a long wire, they say one wavelength or so, or if you're uh, going across the whole entire HF band, then you pick the center frequency and kind of compromise. You can also use a number of radials that have to be close to the ground. Um, you'll see a lot of literature on counterpoises, uh, but since I'm in the attic, I was pretty limited to what I could do. So um, after doing some research and some reading from uh, Balam Design, 
they have a, a good alternative where you can use your coax shielding if it's over 25 feet long. And I've got about a, a 50 foot run. So I elected to use my coax shielding as the counterpoise. And as a result, I also added a one-to-one -one RF choke to keep some of the RF out of my operating area or a, a lot of times what we call out of the shack. So I'll be showing you that. And then, uh, yeah, you can also, if none of these options are possible, you can also ground your antenna tuner and use that as a substitute, but it will lower the overall performance of the antenna. Okay, so those are just some of the general rules. Now, here's one of the nice charts that I found on the internet. Again, this is from Ballum Design, so you can just Google them and locate them very easily on the internet. Um, but here's some of the recommended lengths that are not resonant. And I don't know if you can see the colors, but the, the ones that are in blue here, um, you know, the, the, these are the optimal lengths. Now, selecting the length might be as simple as, you know, the constraints you have where you're going to run your antenna. And you want it to run it straight. If it has to be bent or looped or L-shaped, it will still work. You'll be polarizing it a little differently. But uh, pick one as long as you can. So I had to go with 53 feet in my attic. It seemed to work out just fine. And we'll be testing that and showing you the results. Okay, and then they give you some alternate lengths here. Okay, and more alternate lengths here. Um, so I'm going to just pan back and maybe you want to take a screenshot of that or you can visit their website. And it talks about using the coax shield and it talks about the one-to-one -one choke to prevent RF from feeding back on the shielding, um, which uh, can affect your equipment in a lot of different ways. In fact, before I had the RF choke in there, yeah, I was having some uh, just rather strange, unusual occurrences, and my power supplies were swinging when I keyed up, things like that. So it's important to have a, a good choke and, of course, good grounding as well. So I use 53 feet. It's a non-resonant length. Okay, now, when you cut the wire, you know, don't cut it exactly 53 feet. Okay, you can leave a couple of feet, and you might have to fine-tune it a little bit. Make it longer, make it shorter. And what I found is you don't actually have to cut the wire, but you can actually fold the wire and tie wrap it in place. So, so the two wires are very close together. So I left mine about 18 inches long and I, I folded it, tie wrapped it in three places and that seemed to work good. And I made some fine adjustments to it. But these are good starting points. Again, like everything else, it depends on the environment the antenna is in. So you may have to do a little bit of fine tuning. Okay, and, and the key takeaway here is it's a non-resonant length. So someone's done the work for you here in this in this chart. Okay, so here's here's a diagram, and I got this from the uh, ARRL, um, I guess, white paper on NFED antennas, and I made some modifications to it. So I'm just going to go through this quickly. Of course, you have your transceiver. Now I'm using an antenna tuner, which you'll see. I use a manual antenna tuner, and also my Kenwood T450 has a built-in antenna tuner. Then I have my RF choke in line. Then I have my coax, and this is a fairly long length, okay, that I use as my counterpoise. And then I have my nine to one bottom, or on, on I should say. Um, it's unbalanced to unbalanced in this case. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that because I think there's some confusion out there that some people might have. Okay, and then you see the antenna and an insulator and you can terminate that to any high point. It can be sloping, it can be straight. Um, a lot of times sloping antennas are used and they work just fine. And as I said, um, with the un-un, Okay, and we'll talk about this in detail. It's, it's nine to one, so it transforms 450 ohms 
to 50 ohms, right? Which is the standard impedance for your radio. Um, but you can use a counterpoise. You can use the shielding of your coax if it's over 25 feet long and then add the RF choke. So here back to the diagram, this is about a 50 foot piece of coax that goes from my attic down into my basement. And then I'm using an RF choke, okay, right at the antenna tuner. You don't want to put the RF choke after the bottom because then you're going to choke out the, uh, the RF and you'll basically uh, have no counterpoise because you'll be choking it out prior to the, to the shielded run of 50 feet here. So, so that's important. Um, and when you do that, you don't have to use the grounding on the un-un. And when I talk about the un-un, we'll go into more detail. So that's the basic diagram here. Now for the antenna tuner, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that in detail as well, and the choke and the un-un. But let's just discuss the antenna right now, since this is the simplest component. I've got here a roll of 12 gauge multi-strand insulated wire Okay, you can use a gauge heavier, maybe 10 gauge, or you can go to 14 gauge, a little lighter. Uh, doesn't affect antenna performance that much. Um, so this is a good choice. Um, and I've got plenty of this wire. So it made it an easy choice for me. So like I said, this is the simplest component in the antenna system. We'll just take a, a ring terminal and go ahead and crimp that. I'm trying to do this one-handed. I apologize. Crimp that on the end of the wire. And then after it's crimped, you can solder it. It's always important to solder it. And whether it's being used inside or outside, exposed to the weather, I like to solder all my crimps, all my connections. So you just splice that, crimp on the ring terminal, measure out. We said 53 feet. So say uh, 54, 55 feet or somewhere in between. And then you just fold it over, okay, like so. Okay, start out with 53 feet and then just tie wrap, tie wrap it in place. This way you can make it longer or shorter. And I've got all my antennas tuned this way, all my resonant antennas, I have a, a 10 meter vertical dipole and I left a little bit on the top of it and with a tie wrap I've got to tune that way and I've got a one-to-one -one SWR I tune my inverted V's the same way just fold the wire over closely and and tie wrap it and you'll be able to match it just fine so that's all that I really wanted to say about the long wire antenna um, use a non-resident length cut it a little extra long, tune it by tie wrapping and folding, and, and that's it. And, uh, you know, when you can run this you know, up in your attic or you can run it outside to a tree or a pole or down from a tower. A lot of options out there. Okay, so next we're going to discuss the 9 to 1 unknown.